<laughs> oh, Ivor the Ham, you're in every video, huh? But I don't know if the folks can see you. Can the people see you? I guess they can. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in Far West Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog. And uh, we're starting a new project, and we're going to do, I think, three parts of this. So if you are brand new, tuned into this video just because you saw the title of Building a Rocket Stove, uh, you may want to skip the next, like, two minutes of the video because I'm going to give a little bit of background, but we are going to go ahead and build this rocket stove, and it's really unique, and let me tell you why. You know, one of the things about uh, the current state of sustainable and off-grid or unplugged living is that we're all doing different things in different parts of the country, and everything we do has to be regionalized, sometimes even regionalized in our tiny little micro environment uh, from one place to another. Here in, uh, here in the Chihuahuan Desert, I've got a neighbor about five miles from me. His temperature is always way different than my temperature, and our temperatures are way different than somebody that lives 18 miles that way. So what I'm getting at is you have to regionalize, you have to specialize how you develop the different things that you want to build. Uh, you know, you can't go to a book and open the book and say, okay, here's a definite answer, like you could if you're going to do, uh, for example, frame a house. Now, that's always done the same way, uh, with some minor changes for region, from region to region, but it's always the same way. This kind of stuff, not so much. So today, and in this series of videos, it's going to be three, and it may take me a little bit of time, but we're going to do three videos, and we're going to build a rocket stove that heats hot water, incinerates trash, and also serves as a cooktop. Now that's not only regionalizing, but it's, it's compartmentalizing to what I need, my specific needs, here. You know, along with the need to regionalize everything, we also have different philosophies, those of us that are living this kind of life. There are those that live a minimalist life where they're essentially, uh, as I often say, camping on their property with a light bulb and a laptop. Uh, there are some that live <clears throat> in a million dollar house and they've got, you know, they've got a, an off-grid system but they've got a grid tie system. Or they've got a tremendous set of batteries that cost more than this whole place. Uh, and that's okay too. There's also the people that are living in those tiny little um, uh, homemade campers. I think they call them tiny houses now. There's also people doing that. So we've got people doing all sorts of different things with different philosophies and different adaptations. So some of you don't need, for example, an incinerator if you have trash pickup. You don't need a, um, uh, a hot water heater if you've, if you've made the decision to go ahead and keep your carbon footprint very high and use propane or natural gas. Here, my philosophy is zero or negative carbon footprint. So, repurpose, recycle, reuse, the three R's of sustainable living. That's my philosophy, zero carbon footprint, so I can't use propane or natural gas. Caveat, I love to cook, I'm an excellent cook, I use propane for my cook stove. But I have a unique problem that's come up, and that unique problem is hot water. What am I going to do about hot water? Well, it'd be very simple, propane. That'd be one solution. Another solution would be electric. I generate about enough electricity that I could probably heat a 40-gallon hot water tank uh, with that. And that's going to be one of my backups to this system that I'm going to be building. Um, but, um, but how to create hot water in a system that's running with 60, per, 60 pounds per square inch of pressure. How do I create hot water for that? So I've come up with a solution that's going to involve a rocket stove. Uh, and again, I have trash that needs to be incinerated and I also um, have a spare cooktop that I can use, a comal. If you know what a comal is, it's just a Spanish griddle. So what we're going to do is we're going to repurpose. Now, if if you're cutting ahead, this is a place to cut in. What we're going to do is we're going to repurpose an old gas hot water heater. These gas hot water heaters have a steel core in them, and they also have a central chimney pipe up the center. So essentially, it's like if you were to, um, well, it's like a giant rigatoni. You've got a water jacket around the center core. And that's what we're going to use to make the, um, uh, to make the rocket stove out of. Now, the first thing I have to do, of course, is I've got to strip out the insulation and the outer covering and all the plumbing on the, on the tank. So that's where I'm going to start. Where do you get these tanks? Junkyard, 
Go out on trash day and drive around for a while if you live in an area that uh, there's enough people where you can go around on trash day. Or just advertise, hey, I'm looking for an old hot water heater, free pickup. Pick it up, but it's got to be a gas hot water heater for this purpose, for this, for this build. So let me get this thing stripped down to the core. Uh, I, I'm going to save you a lot of these steps. We're just going to take everything off. So I'll come back when I'm done with that. As you're stripping down the hot water tank, you're going to come up with a big old piece of sheet metal like this. I don't know what the gauge is, but it's really, really thick. Absolutely reusable for projects. And not, to, not that. Including uh, making your own uh, hurricane straps. Very good idea to make hurricane straps with this. It's, it's the same gauge metal as a hurricane strap is. But at any rate, you're left with that. Then... It's morning, so the roosters are raising holy hell. Then you've got the insulation on the outside of the tank. Now, I don't know for sure, but I know that since this is, this is water inside this jacket, it's never going to get above 210 degrees. Just, it won't because you've got, you've got water in there. This stuff probably will burn at four or 500 degrees. Rocket stove at the very top is going to hit 900. So you really don't want to save this. It's got to come off. I use a putty knife, a little time consuming, but not really, just break it off, I'll finish that and get back to you. So this is what you're left with, and this is what the inside of that tank looks like. Just a, a piece of steel with the donut center, so you've got a water jacket around the chimney. You've got this, and you can do whatever you want with it. Now, in, uh, in my giant rocket stove, the one that... Uh, one of my previous videos, just one or two videos ago, in the giant rocket stove, one of these that was still in good shape inside is what I used on the inside of it so that my uh, fire heats up all 40 gallons of water and we circulate all 40 gallons of water. So we used the entire tank on that. Uh, and all I did was invert a 50, uh, 55 gallon drum over the top and there was my rocket stove. Now on this, we're going to make it a lot shorter, and I'll show you in a few minutes. So you're left with the, uh, with the holes. Uh, the thermocoupler was in here. Nice threaded hole here. Uh, the hole here, what's coming out, apparently these people um, had some mineral issues with their water. Uh, and then I've got the, um, uh, the pipe up here where the um, uh, pressure relief was, and of course the in and outs up there. Very typical gas hot water heater. Now. You can, plug the, uh, you can plug these holes with just by using a threaded plug, um, however you want to do it. I think one of the easier ways, or the easy way for me, since I'm going to be using this half inch copper tubing and coiling it, uh, the copper tubing is going to come through these two holes here. What I'm going to do is simply take some um, of that fiberglass roping that you would put around the door of your wood stove. I'm just going to pack some of that fiberglass roping in here. Doesn't have to be airtight entirely. There's going to be vermiculite around it anyway. Just, um, just to plug it as best I can. Uh, I'm not sure, and I haven't researched what else you could use that would be heat resistant, but it's going to have to stand up to a thousand degrees of heat, whatever you use. Uh, so anyway, this is what you're left with. Now this one here, I'm actually going to keep it as a spare. Uh, if someone in the area would like me to build them a rocket stove, then I'll be able to build them a rocket stove out of this tank. Otherwise, I have it as a spare because I had another one that I had already started this project with, but I didn't want to start these videos by showing you that one already started. I wanted you to see how you can strip it out. Also, right here, I have a piece of 4-inch square tubing, and that's going to be my burn inlet. And I'm also, since it's here anyway, I'm going to go ahead and use it as my outlet for the, um, uh, for the exhaust, for the smoke and, uh, and waste to come out. Uh, four inches should be enough for this because it's going to be a small rocket stove. Uh, and I can build, I've got enough here to build again, build a second one. Now you can also Make this any height you want. You could cut the very top off here and actually have your rocket stove, you know, be all of this. Take it down to any height you want, depending on the application you've got. Uh, so I, I think they're very versatile. I think they're really cool. It's a great use of a resource that usually is going to end up in the landfill. 
Maybe somebody uh, recycles them, maybe they don't, but we can make a great rocket stove out of it. So uh, I'm going to move on and show you what, what, what I'm going to start with now for the rest of the construction. So here's what I have for this application, for this rocket stove. And for the location it's going, um, this is the height I needed. Now, I still have here, this is the original burn chamber for the gas, um, for the gas element. The element would sit under here and the uh, flames were set to hit right where I'm making that circle. The flames would hit, heat up the water. Now this isn't a deep enough, it's only like two inches, so it's not deep enough to build an actual flame out of, um, uh, you know, garbage or wood or whatever, whatever you're burning in your rocket stove. So you do need to extend this. Now to extend it, what I've got is the other half of the stove. And you can see on the inside is a pipe. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. But I have to extend this. So what I'm going to do, oh, I think my burn chamber, that's probably good enough for a burn chamber right about there. So I'll cut it here. I have got this piece of grating that I'm going to weld. I'll weld that piece of grating right up in here. That piece of grating will then serve as the, um, as, as a surface for the, uh, for the material to burn in. My feed pipe will come out. This here that I cut out, I did a, a kind of a shoddy job of cutting it because I, I didn't realize I was actually going to use this, but it has to be an ash door. I'll hinge it here simply to remove the ash from the, um, from the bottom. The ash will burn up underneath, so we'll hinge it, open it up, take the ash out. My feed door will be here. This will all attach under here. Uh, and then I've got the height figured out for the application. I'll show you the application uh, it probably in the next video. Now just so you get an idea, to make your rocket stove, you've got your, you've got your cut here. My case, uh, well in any case, the cut's got to be perfectly flat. It isn't yet, so I have to grind it down. My Kamal will weld to the top of this, making the top of the rocket stove. So the Kamal will be here, then the heat will come up circulate and come down, uh, which will give me a hot cooking surface and it will also um, direct, direct the exhaust down to where the exhaust pipe will be. But in here, you see the original chimney pipe. You want to cut that down anywhere from three to four inches. Um, and there is a formula for that, so somebody, if you want to put the formula, I'll certainly post the formula if you comment on it. But I've got about four inches here and the Kamal top will go up. Now what will happen is the original, um, the exhaust from the burning material will come up here, bounce off the Kamal top, come down on the inside of this chamber, and then exit, it'll exit the, um, the exhaust port, which will be on the other side here. Now, the copper tubing, I'm going to coil the copper tubing so that it coils around here. So you'll get, it'll get the heat from the, from the smoke coming up. It'll get the heat all from in, within here. All that will be under pressure, 60 pounds of pressure with a circulating pump and a thermocoupler on it. Uh, and we'll get to that in the... Um, caught me finishing up here. I uh, fin finished up all my grinding and cutting and I've got my copper tubing in place here. There's about 40 feet of copper tubing coiled up inside here. Uh, it's not coiled real neatly, but um, it'll go through just fine. Now, I had thought that I had half inch tubing. But what I had was 3 8 inch tubing that I had bought for the um, beer can um, hot water heater that ended up not working. So um, I just have to wait and get some fittings for this. Now the difference between a half and 3 8 inch would make a difference if the uh, pressurized water was actually going to be flowing through this uh, into the hot water tanks and out into the whole system because 3 8 isn't going to give us enough pressure. 
but because this is just only going this is only going to have anything any kind of interaction with the rest of the pressure in the system when it's working and then the circulating pump is on it doesn't really matter how fast it goes through here so long as the water inside here doesn't go over the boiling point uh, which shouldn't happen because this pump is uh, uh, moves quite a bit of water quite quickly even through 3 8 inch pipe so I'm ready to start welding this thing up uh, what I'm going to do is weld it up and put it all together uh, once it's welded then I'll come back and I'll do part two on this not sure if there'll be a part three or not uh, now I know that there's a few local people that do watch my channel from time to time and I want, did want to put out there that I do have enough material left over to make a small uh, version of this this is already small but make a smaller version probably about the size of um, the bottom part here uh, which would um, thermal siphon hot water for those for people that don't have a pressurized system and it would also be a nice cooktop um, and even a heater for inside of their little cabin so I just thought I'd mention that uh, if someone were to see it and be interested in having me make it for them get in touch with me it is going to be something like a couple hundred dollars so uh, because it's a lot of work and a lot of effort and copper tubing isn't cheap so anyway I guess that's it until part two so until I get part two up here it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch in far west Texas saying see you later